we are here today with an exclusive. We're gonna be talking about a brand new biological age lab test that for the very first time can actually predict the rate of aging, how quickly you're aging inside of your body with just literally just a couple of drops of blood. Now, there are three total labs out of the entire world that have master the science of essentially what's called the aging clock inside of your body. Sometimes it's called the Horvath clock. There's all sorts of different studies, and there's about a half a dozen of these clocks right now. But what the clock means is it's looking at your rate of aging. So you could be aging at one year, biological for one year, chronological. And what that means is that you are aging right at your current chronological age. But the goal, we know that the goal to be able to feel better and increase health span, that's the number of healthy years in your life before diagnosed with a disease and hopefully never diagnosed with a disease, that's the goal. We'll talk about that a little bit later in the show. But the slower the rate of aging, more than likely, the longer the lifespan. So there are two things that we always need to be doing, technically three. So one is we run our annual blood work to make sure we are free of diagnosed disease. Number two is we make sure that we don't have any of the underlying imbalances that would lead to disease in the first place, right? So that's your big five at-home lab tests, looking at your gut health, your hormones, uh, looking at your omega-6 to omega-3 inflammation score, your heavy metals, and much more. So that's a great thing to do. And then the third one, though, is actually looking at biological age because this will show you specifically how inflammation and oxidative stress in your body is affecting you here in and now. And the goal will be, how do we slow down that rate of aging? Which means that your body is just dealing with less oxidative stress. Now, I will share with you, if you're someone like me, and we're going to get into the lab test in just a second, if you're someone like me, you're already going to have to be doing more work than the average individual. Now, that's not a bad thing, but you're going to have to be doing a little bit tighter in your nutrition, a little bit tighter on your exercise, your steps, your movement, a little bit tighter on your sleep in order to be able to get that biological age lower and lower and lower. And the reason is, is that if you have any of those MTHFR gene mutations, we'll talk about that, or the APOE genotype 3-4 or 4-4, you're going to just produce more inflammation and oxidative stress. So so the good news is, though, there's always things to be done. And no, we do not have to suffer from any of the diseases of age, such as the heart disease, high blood pressure, type 2 diabetes, cancer, or Alzheimer's, all right? So let's get into it. If you're not already following along, follow along with the video right on YouTube. We'd love you to subscribe, be a part of this global health community there. But also, they're always available right at stephencabral.com forward slash podcast every single day, a new episode. So today's episode. So 2645, if you want to actually see what this biological age lab test looks like as we are scrolling through. And of course, now I wanted to share with you, there's only three labs right now that have this so tight and so defined that it's repeatable, meaning like you can run this same lab multiple, multiple times, typically every three to six months maximum. Like that's, that's how often you want to do it. And the accuracy is under now 12 months, meaning like um, used to be I'm telling you right now, when I was doing this, and it was around 2010 to 2012, uh, we stopped doing it because the inaccuracy was so wild. It was actually a plus or minus of nine years. So that's that's way too much. Now, that was in the infancy, but it's also why I haven't brought you this new lab test until now, because the repeatability only got sub-12 months within the last 12 months. Now, it's gotten pretty good over the last three years, but not enough for me to recommend it to you. So now it's actually accurate and repeatable. So meaning like you could do the same lab on the same day and actually get the same results. Uh, that's, a, that's a cornerstone of the work that I do. You need to be able to have the repeatability. Uh, but also, it's only going to get better. And so what I want you to do is, is almost like not view it exactly as, okay, this is five star. I want you to view it as this is showing you, are you aging plus or minus your chronological age. That's what I want you to know right now. And then the goal will be to choose one, two, or three new variables, like a lot that I talk about in high-performance health. Choose only one, two, or three, not a million, just a couple, and do those over the next three months or so, and then retake your biological lab test to make sure that they're actually slowing your rate of aging, which means improving, most likely, your overall health. All right, let's get started. Again, I will link it. Well, the video will be here. You're probably watching it right now. But if not, it's at stephencabral.com forward slash 2645. All right. So I'm just going to give you the highlights. 
Uh, and this is right from the beginning. This is their latest report. I'll always do a new podcast when new reports come out. But what I do is, again, I teach this at a much deeper level. I'm just giving you a cursory overview so you actually know what you're getting on this lab test. All right. So when we're looking at your age of or your rate of aging, uh, this person right here, there's a sample report. Their calendar age, that's chronological, that means the number of birthdays that you've celebrated, that their age is 28. Now, their biological age is 26. So great. They're not even at 28 years old, they're aging slower than their chronological age. That's a good sign, right? All right. So next up, we're looking at the DNA index. And this is just basically a rate. And if you're someone that's a competitive person, you like to say, how am I doing versus general population? You know, we have those people in our community. That's totally fine. Uh, it says that you are aging 75% or you're younger than 75% of people in your age group for this individual. So fantastic. And you can actually see on this little scatter plot graph. If, again, if you're following along, if not, I'm going to give you the audio the whole time. But this is our second marker. And we look at, okay, this person's doing better than 70. They're in the 75th percentile. So that means their age is slower than their chronological age. So they're doing great and shows them right there. Number 75. And they're ahead of 74 other people. All right. So, uh, when we look at just male or females, we see that this individual is in the 73rd percentile, not 75th, uh, because uh, men are typically a little bit behind than women when it comes to the rate of aging. Now, their overall aging rate is a 0.93. This is something I wanted to describe for you because 0.93 means this. So 0.93 means that for every one year of aging, this individual is aging only 0.93 years. So if we look at that over a 12 month year, and we would take off about 10%, that's 1.2 months. So they basically for the year, I like to look at it this way, they stop aging in mid November, and then they don't age for the second half of November and all of December every year. Right? So like, that's how you can look at it. They actually get a month and a half almost of no aging for that year. All right. So this person's obviously doing quite well. In an ideal world, what I teach in HPH is that we want people below a 0.95. So this person's doing well. There's no doubt about it. No matter what their specific APOE genotype, we'll get to that in a moment or their MTHFR. All right, so let's get into it. Um, this is your results over time. So if you were to take multiple uh, biological age tests, you would hopefully see your biological age going down even with your chronological age continuing to go up. That's what's been happening to me. I'm happy to report. I like to think that uh, hopefully what I'm doing is working, which is really great. All right, so now we get into the epimetabolic index. It just stands for basically epigenetics and how DNA methylation affects aging. So this person right here has pretty good genes. And again, this is just a sample report, but their epigenetic aging where the reference point might be a 6.3 for like your average individual. These are just numbers. So you want to be lower than the reference point, right? Theirs is a 4.6. And all that means is that every time their cells replicate and that DNA has to be replicated, right? So uh, this is where telomeres come in and the DNA replication where the liver cell is told to become another liver cell and not a heart cell or skin cell or anything else, that that information is transcribed properly. But as Dr. David Sinclair has said, he's come up with the analogy of like a record or a CD. And so what happens is over time that CD can be scratched and the actual replication then is not perfect and that can lead to faster aging. But we also know now that you can erase those scratches off the record. So that's pretty impressive. All right, so now we are getting into the APOE genotype. So we are looking specifically at is this person a 2-2? So again, there's, uh, you know what I'll do is I have podcasts on all of these different topics if they're interesting to you. So I'm going to link up APOE genotype to see what your APOE genotype may mean and why one of those APOE genotypes is more prone to Alzheimer's, much higher prone to Alzheimer's, but it also doesn't mean that you need to get it. So uh, APOE genotype, it could be a, so it's basically like pairs, right? So almost like your chromosomes. So you get a, a two or three or four from each parent. Uh, and then we'll look at this. It can be a two, three, two, two, three, 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 four, or 
a 4-4, four, four, right? So there's, you can do double twos, double threes, double fours, or you can do mix and match each one. That's probably the easier way to say it. So what you ideally are not looking for is a four in that number, all right? But like I said, some people have a four, and that's okay. And the more fours you have, the more prone you are to inflammation, not being able to process cholesterol or fats very well. I've talked about that before. It's basically the inability to uh, remove those as fast as a rate as other people, which is why everybody preaching a high-fat diet and, and a carnivore diet and all that is just, again, they don't, they're not looking and they're not peeling back the onion as to how that's actually going to hurt about 26% of the population. So could it help? You know, for some people, well, I, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Um, but again, it's not an all-for-one. So we look at a bio-individuality basis for each person in order to truly help them. So this person's a 3-3. Three, three. And so we know, based on the APOE genotype, if you have a 2, you're typically going to age at a slower rate, anywhere from like 0.85 to 0.9. If you have a 3-3, three, three, you're going to age more like 0.9 to 0.95. And again, this is weighted over the whole test. It's not just this one thing. And then if you are a 3-3, a, a APOE 3.4 or 4.4, you're gonna age somewhere like 0.95 seems to be the very lowest to about uh, 1, 1 1.5. So you you can actually age at a faster rate. But again, it doesn't mean you have to, it just means that you may be more prone to. And certainly I know I was uh, back in the day, that's for sure. All right, next up we have the MTHFR gene. What this means is that uh, this is the methylation gene. So it's always talked about in conjunction with vitamin B9, which is folate. And it tells you essentially that if you have any, uh, you're looking for C's and not T's, right? So C means, think about this, enzyme activity is working great. You're in the clear. If you see a T, that means there's a little bit of a, um, uh, I call it an occlusion, but like you're not able to fully methylate and you need more methyl donors. Okay. And then you could be, so you can be a C, CC, you can be a CT, or you could be a TT. CT is heterozygous. So you have a little bit of uh, deactivated or lower enzyme activity. And a TT is much lower enzyme activity. It doesn't mean you can't use folate. It just means that you have a harder time and typically need a little bit of supplementation with that. Okay, so that's that. So this individual, again, great genes for this individual, and they have a double C. And so that's why they're gonna have less inflammation in their body. They're gonna have better uh, of an epigenetic profile and um, overall less oxidative stress. So fantastic, right? We like to see that. But again, even if you have a TT, it does not mean that you can't function perfectly normal. We talk about things like uh, trimethylglycine, B6, B9, B12, all these different methyl donors that are phenomenal for being able to support the body. And then we talk about specific foods to use. So again, there's always an answer, but this is how you actually get your genetic information to know what MTHFR gene mutation you may be. So that is the crux of the test. Now, they're looking at thousands of different markers, but typically all from within this frame. And I'm telling you right now, it is an amazing way to begin to go deeper into your body because you would just never know this. So yes, you can look at certain things like um, exercise tolerance and skin aging and all these different things, which are markers of aging. And I'll link up another podcast called the um, 18 biological markers of aging or biomarkers of aging. So I'll link that up. I'll link up the APOE genotype that you'll want to check out. And what it will do though, is it will just give you more knowledge, more education, which is all, which I'm all about. And the reason is, is that knowledge truly is power. So that you're not relying all the time on your PCP or doctor, no matter how amazing they are, to just say, okay, you know, what am I supposed to be doing? What am I supposed to be looking at? That you can actually take that power into your own hands and if you don't see a number you like, honestly, don't get down on yourself. You just say, okay, this is my baseline. This is my starting point. Now I'm going to be able to improve this every three to six months. I'll run the lab. I'll see where I'm at. I'll see what's working. I'll continue to tweak the plan. And you've got your lifetime to continue to slow that rate of, rate of aging. Now, that will, what will it will lead to is what I wanted to share with you at the beginning of the show is that you'll be able to increase your health span. That's the number of years you stay healthy. And at the same time, hopefully your lifespan based on the different things you're doing, like the de-stress protocol, in order to improve both of those. Because they've found that centenarians, 100 plus year olds, 
let's say they live to 100 years old, instead of getting diagnosed with diseases in their 40s and early 50s, which is typically the point, and then getting put on a whole slew of pharmaceuticals, they live a long, healthy life until 95, 99 years old. And then within the last three to 12 months of their life, that is actually when they start to see that deterioration. Unlike the majority of the world, which you know they live with the normal aches and pains uh, till their mid 40s or so, and then for the last 30 years of their life till the average age of around 75 or so, um, they're on medications and they're not enjoying a great quality of life. So for me, it's not just about living a long time, it's enjoying a healthy and great quality of life with lots of vibrance and vitality so that you want to live a healthy life. Hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, again, I will make sure that if you are not able to watch the video at this time, it'll be up at stephencabral.com forward slash 2645. I'll also put a link to this specific lab. And if there's any discounts from the lab company, uh, we will certainly link that up. But again, at stephencabral.com forward slash 2645. Have an amazing day, everybody. I'll talk with you soon. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics that you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.